might have a passing familiarity with your nervous system, like the brain bones connected to the spinal cord bone and the spinal cord bones connected to the motor neuron bone. That's your central nervous system, and there aren't actually any bones. The central nervous system, or just CNS, is what makes your body's big decisions. This system is the command center, and if you mess with it, things are gonna get weird. There's also the peripheral nervous system, which is composed of scout-like sensory neurons that gather information and report it back to the central nervous system. But to get a handle on just how physical the roots of your mind and personality are, how concretely your nervous system makes you you, let me tell you a story. The Curious Case of Phineas Gage. In 1848, a genial chap named Phineas Gage was working on the railroad, tamping gunpowder into a blasting hole with an iron rod when the gunpowder ignited. The resulting explosion caused the rod to shoot like a bullet up through his left cheek and out the top of his head. There's brain in between those two places, by the way. Amazingly, he stood up after the accident and walked over to a cart, described what had happened, and then they drove him back to his house, all while he was conscious. So the doctor came to examine him uh, and refused to believe that a rod had in fact passed through his head. Understandably. Until Phineas started coughing and an amount of brain that the doctor described as a teacup full fell out of his head and the doctor had to accept, indeed, what had happened. After a few months of convalescing, he was pretty much healed up and moving around like he used to. But some of his friends were saying that Phineas was no longer himself. Yes, he had his memories and mental abilities, and he walked and talked and looked the same, minus an eyeball. But whereas the old Phineas was mild-mannered and soft-spoken, the post-spike to the brain Phineas was surly and mean-spirited and vulgar. People started to describe him as no longer Gage. Phineas moved away from America, the scientific establishment lost contact with him, and 12 years later, after a series of seizures, he died at the age of 36. Phineas is a great, if extreme, example of how function is localized in the brain, and how physical biological factors can be reflected in psychological ways. Of course, he's also an excellent example of how individual case studies are not particularly useful, especially since we have very little data on what Phineas was actually like before, or even after his accident. Most accounts are from the months directly after the the accident and many of them conflict, it's completely possible that he continued to heal and lived his remaining years as a happy and productive citizen. Intro psychology texts often paint a pretty simple picture of Phineas, just so that we can have a clear example of the moment when physicians realized that messing with the brain was messing with the mind, but it is, of course, all much more complicated, and as Phineas was an actual real-life person, I feel like we should give him the nuance and mystery that he deserves.